Hello and welcome. My name is Waldo, and in this video, I am excited to be back on the Cummins swap. But it's not just a Cummins swap, we're also swapping an Eaton Fuller manual transmission into this truck. Now, the truck is a 1995 GMC C3500 HD, and it came from the factory with a four speed 4L80 automatic transmission. And that means that this Eaton Fuller transmission is not plug and play. So, in this video, we're going to be trying to get the clutch release mechanism to work. But before we can do that, I need to reinstall this engine and transmission back into the truck, hopefully for the last time, or at least the last planned time. So let's fire up Dyno and bring this thing over to the shop. We're doing a Cummins swap. This is it, my 1995 C3500 HD. We're swapping a 24 valve Cummins into it, along with a five speed Eaton Fuller transmission out of a Freightliner. The goal is to have a capable and comfortable truck for towing and hauling future projects. It's exciting to see it start to look like a truck again. Here, watch this. Nice and smooth. Well, unfortunately it got dark out because that's just what happens this time of year. So we're supposed to get an inch of rain tomorrow, which means I really have to get this done tonight so I can get this back in the shop. And why are we doing it outside of the shop? Well, unfortunately the shop isn't quite big enough for this, I don't think. So I had to roll the truck out and uh, we're just gonna roll the truck forward, lift this up, roll the truck forward, kind of do what we did before when I was test fitting the engine. So I've done this like a million times at this point, so it shouldn't be too hard. Cue the music. It's making me a little bit nervous because this is at a bit of an angle. Uh, it's kind of tilted this way because the ground isn't level. So I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll grab a, a strap or a chain or something and just tie the top of this to a tree over there and that'll keep it from tipping over. Um, I kind of had that problem when I was removing this engine from the Dodge. I kind of noticed that all of a sudden the engine crane was tilted to the side and it looked like it was going to fall over. So. I, uh, well, I grabbed a ratchet strap and tied it to the tractor and it actually works pretty well. You gotta do what you gotta do. Well, the engine is pretty close to being in place, so uh, next I'm just going to bolt this thing up and then we'll get on with getting the clutch working. 
Well, I managed to get the engine in place and the truck back into the garage. Let's start out by taking a look at the pedals. So this is a clutch pedal that I got out of a, uh, well, one of these trucks that had a manual transmission. I actually bought it from a junkyard in, I think, Pennsylvania, and they shipped it to me. And uh, yeah, so it should be plug and play. So this thing just kind of connects right in here. There's already a hole in the firewall. And then I'm just going to be able to hook a stock master cylinder up uh, onto this bracket and then hook it up to the pedal. So while I'm in here, I'm also going to deal with the brake pedal. Now this brake pedal right here, it has the really thick pedal down at the bottom, which is typical for automatics. Uh, it, the clutch pedal is not going to fit with that. So when I bought the clutch pedal, uh, I also had them send me a brake pedal from the same truck. So it, uh, it has this nice skinny bit here. Now the profile of the pedals is different. They're not the same. And the brake pedal that they sent me actually is not going to fit. The brake pedal that came on this vehicle, um, it actually curves back more than this. Uh, and that is to avoid some parts uh, under the dash here, and it is necessary. So I'm not going to be able to use this pedal. So I'm just going to cut this pedal off of here and weld it on here, and then I'll have a skinny pedal. And since we're talking about pedals, I have the accelerator pedal here. This is from the Dodge. I just uh, cut off this aluminum bracket here. And I'm not going to do this today, I don't think, but I am going to make a bracket to bolt this up to right here where the GM accelerator pedal went and then probably cut a hole in the firewall to run the uh, throttle linkage to the top of this and it should be pretty easy to do. So I have the clutch pedal in place on the inside of the truck and this is the outside of the firewall. And now I have a master cylinder which really just slides right on. Really just slides right on, come on. <laughs> there we go, all right. And it's basically plug and play. So I just got to put a couple nuts on here to hold that in place. I am going to try to use this slave cylinder, but it does have this metal line here, which is not flexible. So I'm not sure exactly how the routing for this is going to go. We're going to get to that later, but uh, this is going to be interesting. I got the master cylinder bolted on and I got this clutch linkage here linked up to the master cylinder and the clutch pedal itself. So it's in pretty good shape here. That's all hooked up. So because of this rigid line and the way that it's shaped so awkwardly, I'm having a really hard time getting this slave cylinder to get, you know, approximately into place where I want it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the line from the slave cylinder and from the master cylinder, see what kind of connections these have, and then I'm going to see if I can order a, a custom hose for this. All right, so we'll start with this. I guess worst case scenario here is I have to bleed the system if this doesn't end up working. It actually kind of looks like there's a roll pin in here that I'm going to need to punch out. Hopefully this is the right size roll pin punch. Uh, it might be a little bit too big actually. Nope, that one's too small. I don't have the right size roll pin pu punch here. It's come to this. I'm using an Allen wrench to try to bang this out. I'm sure I have the right size roll pin for, for this. It's probably sitting on a workbench or something, but I didn't see it, so. There it is. And with that out, let's see how much fluid is gonna come out of here? Uh, kind of a lot. I guess I should get something to catch this brake fluid. Yeah, so this connection looks exactly like the one that was on the Dodge. I think I can get this on the internet. It does look like this uh, clutch assembly, this clutch release assembly that I have is uh, user bleedable. Uh, it's not one of those like permanently sealed factory bled units. So I should be able to bleed this when I'm done. I managed to order a line and the adapters I need. So while we're waiting for that to come in, let's take a look at the mechanical linkage. 
All right, so this is what we're dealing with right here. So we have the clutch release lever right here. So somehow I need to pull this or push this in this direction to release the clutch. One of the options is to have the master cylinder push up against the lever, sort of like this. But unfortunately, I guess it's a little bit off camera, but realistically that's not gonna work because this end of the master cylinder is way too far down and it would stick out so that, you know, obstacles or like road hazards, stuff like that could hit it, which would be catastrophic. Also, there's not really anywhere for me to mount it down here. I don't really have any good mounting points in this area. So the best place I have to mount things is this right here, uh, which also happens to be where the transmission mount is. I have three bolt holes. There's a bolt missing here, but you can ignore that. I have three bolt holes here that I could mount a plate and then I can weld things onto it uh, and have it go anywhere I want uh, for mounting things. So I was thinking I could probably have the slave cylinder mounted somewhere over here. And it seems like, well, what are you gonna do? Like this thing needs to go in this direction. Your slave cylinder is push pushing here. And well, there's a solution for that. So my solution is I'm gonna have a lever. And this is a bit of a CAD, cardboard aided design, a bit of a mock-up for the lever. So I'm gonna have the lever going in this direction and there'll be a linkage from here to here. It actually might not be using this hole. I might use other holes on this, but uh, the point is that this is gonna pull up and this will pull this up. And then I don't know the exact angle of the other part of the lever here, the other side. I can't really go straight out like this because the slave cylinder would have to push down on it and there's no room for it up here. So uh, it's gonna have to be pushing in this direction, which means the lever is gonna have to come down something like this. And I cut this template out like this so that I could sort of get it in place here, figure out what it's gonna look like. And then I can mark on it exactly where I want the lever to go. And then uh, when I'm actually fabricating the lever, I can use this as sort of a guide. So as for positioning this part of the lever, I actually don't want them to be completely parallel like this. Um, I, I want them to be parallel uh, when they're both roughly halfway through their travel because this one swings like this and this lever sort of swings like this. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm gonna have it about like this. So, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want them to be roughly parallel when they're halfway through their swings. And then the slave cylinder will go, kind of go over here. And if I just hold this like this, I can see uh, where the, the rod of the slave cylinder matches up with the lever. And I'm just gonna hold this with my hand because I need more, more than one hand. I need more than two hands for this. And I'm gonna make a little mark on this. So uh, I think if I were to draw the, have the lever go down like this, that would work pretty well. Oh, you know what? Actually, the slave cylinder is actually going to be pushing right there because I, I have calculated that I want it to be about three inches away from the fulcrum point. I did a bunch of math to figure out exactly how much travel I need, uh, so how long both sides of the lever need to be relative to the fulcrum. I guess I'll go through that later. So the first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to fabricate the lever. Once I get that done, I'll fabricate a mount for the lever and then I'll fabricate a mount for the slave cylinder itself. So I went ahead and modified this template to adjust it to approximately what the lever is going to look like. So the slave cylinder will apply force here, which is three inches from the fulcrum. On this end of the lever, there are three holes drilled. and That's going to allow me to adjust how much leverage that I get. So the problem is that I'm trying to optimize for the right amount of pedal travel and for the right amount of force and the right feel, but I don't know exactly how much leverage I need in order to obtain that. So by having a little bit of adjustment available, I'll be able to adjust it uh, after I build this and install it. So this diagram here shows that not only will the lever that I'm gonna fabricate have three holes in it, but I'm also gonna drill three holes in the existing clutch release lever that's part of the transmission. Or rather, it already has one hole, but I'm gonna drill two additional holes. Having all these holes will allow me a lot of different possibilities. Uh, it'll allow me to adjust how much leverage I get so that I can get the feel of the clutch pedal just right. So first, let's take a look at the amount of travel that it takes to move this lever to fully disengage the clutch. Now to simplify this, we're gonna actually work with linear travel. Yes, the lever rotates around this point here, so it actually makes an arc, but like I said, we're gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna look at linear travel. So that is, uh, say for point one, what is the distance between this point and the end point when it fully disengages the clutch? And for hole one, it's 2.27 inches. For hole two, it's 2.51 inches. And for hole three, it's 2.75 inches. 
So now if we look at the lever that I'm fabricating, this side is going to be fixed. It's gonna be a fixed three inches from the fulcrum. This is where the slave cylinder is gonna be applying force. Now the other side of the lever has three holes in it and each hole has a different length. So hole A is 5.25 inches from the fulcrum, hole B is 4.63 inches, and hole C is four inches from the fulcrum. Based on which hole that I end up using, it'll have a different leverage ratio. And then lastly, this table up here shows how far the slave cylinder rod will travel based on the settings for each hole. So for example, if I connected the linkage between hole one and hole A, the slave cylinder rod would travel 1.3 inches. That's the shortest amount of travel, which would provide the firmest pedal feel. If I wanna to go to the other extreme, I could connect the linkage between hole C and hole three, and that would give a travel of 2.07 inches, which would provide the lightest pedal feel. I think I'm gonna start out by connecting the linkage between hole B and hole two, and that'll give me 1.63 inches of travel for the slave cylinder rod. And so that's a pretty moderate place to start and then I'll be able to adjust it from there. Now you might ask, Waldo, how do you know how far the slave cylinder rod is supposed to travel? And you know, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Uh, I did actually look at the slave cylinder that came from the Dodge donor truck, and based on the wear pattern of it, like how much rust was on uh, part of the rod, and how much of it was not rusty, which I could tell would never actually left the cylinder. It looked like during normal usage, the full travel was 1.63 inches. However, when I pulled the rod out all the way, it looks like it was actually capable of traveling 2.75 inches. So I think that somewhere in there is where I'm going to have the slave cylinder travel on this truck. Knowing that gives me kind of a ballpark idea of how far I should expect the slave cylinder rod to travel. And this table here shows how far it actually will travel uh, with each of these holes being used. So I'm gonna cut up some pieces of flat bar to start making this lever. I'm gonna be using 3 16 and quarter inch thick flat bar for different parts of it based on how much strength is required. And to make this angle cut, I'm gonna use my Milwaukee metal cutting circular saw. This thing is amazing. It, it'll make real short work of this 3 16 inch uh, flat bar. As always, I'll include a link in the description to this below. For the non-angled cuts, it is a lot more precise to use the chop saw. We're gonna drill a 7 16 hole in this for a bolt that'll act as the fulcrum for the lever. I'll start with a quarter inch drill bit because it's easier to be precise. So this is what I'm up to so far. So I got this thing here. Uh, we have a one inch spacer in here and uh, this is gonna form the fulcrum. There's a 7 16 bolt here and there are some nylon bearings on both sides of this. So on the long side of the lever, I'm just gonna weld this on here, sort of like this. And we'll go down to a single piece for where the linkage connects to these holes. And then for the other side of the lever, I'm gonna weld these on here we're gonna put a nice little chamfer on these edges before I weld them up. So when I weld these together, this is a butt joint. And that's why I chamfered the edges because it gives a place for the weld to go, therefore making the joint a lot more strong once it's welded. Well, that came up pretty well and it didn't warp either. All right, so it's time to start welding these two brackets together to make one lever. Yeah, so before I fully weld this, I just wanted to make sure that there's enough uh, 
space in here for this to spin so that it's not like so tight that it'll keep this bearing from working. So I want to make sure this thing is fairly perpendicular. So I ended up taking a 5 8 piece of round bar, drilling a 3 8 hole into it, and then just welding it to the end here. And this is where the slave cylinder will push onto the lever. And with that, the lever is complete. The next day. So I figured this video might have been getting a little bit long, so I went ahead and created this bracket here. And this is what holds the lever, so it kind of goes on like this. We'll throw a bolt through here. And the lever is able to move like this. And then this bracket right here is where the slave cylinder fits in. Something like this. And then, you know, I throw a couple nuts on here. Uh, this is obviously the slave cylinder is fully extended here, so it'll actually be more like this. But yeah, this thing's looking pretty good. Let me give you a little better angle here. I just got to do a little bit more strengthening on this. I think I'll throw some gussets here and maybe back here. But other than that, this thing is just about ready to get bolted into the truck. So I finished adding some gussets on this to help strengthen it up. Now this thing is really quite overbuilt at this point, but that's kind of the way I like it. Now before I put the lever back onto this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some white lithium grease to lubricate this. So these nylon bearings are intended to run dry. That would be totally okay here but they're also pretty resistant to petroleum products, so it's okay to lubricate them. And the main point of using this white lithium grease is actually to prevent from corrosion, because this here is mild steel. The bolt I'm using is stainless, so I don't have to worry about that, but I would like to prevent rusting in here. So, I don't know, I'll just throw some in here. I think I got plenty of grease in there at this point. Even though I'm using a nylon lock nut, I'm going to throw a lock washer on here as well, just because I want this to make, I want to make sure that the bolt doesn't rotate relative to the lever itself. I want the bolt and the lever to stay as one. All right, so I got this thing to the point where it's tight enough but so that there's like, I don't know, almost no play in this, but it does move freely. So that's pretty good. We'll go with that. All right, so let's try to fit this bracket in here. And, oh shoot, Houston, we have a problem. So the slave cylinder right here, can you guys see that, is hitting the cross member right here. Just a little bit, it's actually really close. It's almost working, just not quite enough clearance. I was kind of afraid that would happen because I made this 90 degrees from this uh, rather than up at an angle like I had planned. All right, so I think I figured out what I'm gonna do about this to try to fix this clearance issue with the fewest downsides. 
And so I think I'm gonna cut a little gap out of this. Not a gap, a wedge. I'm gonna cut a wedge out of this. Leave this side here, the one that's on this side. And then what I can do is I can sort of bend this together. And obviously these mounting bolts up here are gonna go exactly where I intended them. But this whole assembly will be able to rotate up a little bit and then I'll weld it back together. I think I can do that and it won't lose too much strength. It also won't be too difficult. So this is not a huge downside. So let's get to it. Yeah, so I made some very slight changes to it. I just cut out a little wedge up here. Uh, I haven't fully welded it yet. I just tacked it together to make sure that it would clear it. Uh, it really only had to move it just up a tiny bit and we have adequate clearance. So this is good to go. We'll bring this back to the shop, fully weld it, and then reinstall this thing. All right, well, this is where we're at so far. Um, I got this thing reinstalled. Everything looks pretty good. So we got this lever here, which moves really well. We got the slave cylinder mounted. I think I might want to put a little bit of grease in there because I don't know if you could hear that squeaking noise, but I think it's coming from that. And uh, so next, I got a couple things to do. Uh, I have to link this lever up with this lever. Um, I guess I also kind of along those lines, I have to drill a couple more holes in this. Uh, I have a special right angle compact drill coming so that I can do that with this in the truck. And then second, I have to get the hydraulic line for this and run it to the master cylinder. Uh, hopefully that should be coming tomorrow. But overall, I'm really happy with how this is coming along. Tomorrow. All right, so let's try to get this linkage set up. So I guess I'm going to start by throwing a bronze bearing into this hole. This will adapt it to the right size for the clevis. And we'll throw this clevis on here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the top lever. We're going to use this hole on the end here. There it is. This is all the way down and obviously that's not going to work. So I think I'm actually going to just have to make, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of wish I moved this uh, lever up a little bit higher. I might just have to use a rod and stick it through these holes, bend it just right. Do something a little bit more custom. Let's figure out what the distance is. When it's all the way down, we're looking at like just about three and a half inches. All right, so this is the linkage that I came up with. I ended up being able to reuse one of the clevises and then I just welded a piece of uh, 3 8 inch round bar to a 5 16 fine threaded bolt. And that gives me some adjustment here for length so I can get it just right. And then as for this, I have uh, two washers here that are going to go on either side of the lever. And that's going to be held in place with a cotter pin. And there it is. This thing looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, so the hose came in along with the fittings that I need. So the hose is steel braided and it has dash three AN fittings on the end, female. Uh, I went and got ahead and got a 90 degree fitting to help make it to the back of the slave cylinder. And then these are the adapters that go from the dash three AN to the connection that the slave and master cylinders use. And these come with these little seals. I also removed the master and slave cylinders from the vehicle because I need to bleed this outside of the vehicle. So this seal just goes like that onto this fitting uh, and then it just goes in here. And then I stick a roll pin through here and it holds it in place. And it's the same thing with the master cylinder, although this actually already has the seal in there. It didn't come out when I removed the other fitting. So we'll just stick that in, there we go. So I have all the fittings snugly connected and now I'm ready to start gravity bleeding the system. So when you're, when you're gravity bleeding the system, it's really important to ensure that there are no air pockets stuck anywhere. So in this case, I have the master cylinder angled upwards like this. And what this does is that it ensures that all the air is able to go up this way into the reservoir and escape the system. And then I have the slave cylinder down here. 
and this is angled upwards so that fluid will come in the line, fill up the cylinder, and then all the air will escape out of the drain port right here. So all I have to do is put fluid in the master cylinder, open up this port, and wait for fluid to start coming out of the uh, drain port, which is actually, there's a little hole on the other side here. This clutch system calls for dot three brake fluid. The way this is angled, I'm actually gonna have to keep filling it up. It's gonna be a little tricky. Maybe I'll angle it a little less severely for now. A little, <laughs> a little less severely for now, and then I might uh, change the angle later just to make sure I get all the air out of here. Let's open up the bleed screw now. Oh, and I can see fluid coming out, so I'm going to close this. So there is a little bit of air trapped up here in this part of the master cylinder. So if you look closely in here, you can see the air bubbles come out as I sort of activate this push rod here. So I'm just gonna do this until all the air bubbles are gone. Air bubbles are getting fewer and far between. So change the angle of this. Try again. Yeah, we'll get some more. It's looking pretty good. Still got a few air bubbles here and there, little ones. Yeah, so this thing is pretty stiff and there are no air bubbles coming out. So I think we did a good job. All right, so I got the hydraulic assembly reattached and I have to admit, I already tried it off camera and I am just so amazed at how awesome this thing is. Here, watch this. It's so light that I can actually press it with my hand. Nice and smooth. Now with my hand, I can press it all the way till the pedal bottoms out here. So I don't know if uh, it's actually fully disengaging the clutch. That's something that I'm gonna have to test. But if it's not, I can always adjust the linkage and that'll cause the pedal to be a little bit firmer, but it'll give me more clutch travel. But with how light this is, that's not a problem at all. I was really worried that this was gonna be heavy, like really heavy, but this is so light and, and smooth that you could drive this thing and stop and go traffic and it's not even a problem. I am over the moon with how well this turned out. I was expecting it to be one of the biggest challenges of the swap, and it was a big challenge, but it just goes to show what can be accomplished with a little bit of planning and hard work. I learned how to drive a manual on a mid-90s Ford Ranger, and from what I remember, it had a very stiff clutch pedal with very little travel. It had very little feel to it, so that made it pretty hard for a beginner to learn. I was worried that this clutch would also be very heavy, especially since it has a medium-duty truck transmission. The fact that the clutch pedal ended up being smooth and relatively light is what makes me so happy about the outcome. I'm really excited to get this project finished so that I can try driving it. I still have a lot of stuff to do, but I think in the next video I'll work on some of the controls. I'll get the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal mounted and positioned properly. I'll also get the huge shifter cut down to size and installed. If you're still watching this video, you are a member of the Awesome Squad, and you should let me and everybody else know down in the comments below how awesome you are. Thank you for watching.